Your derived query will only live for the life of the single query. Now, when they told me that, I go, well, nobody tells me what to do. I'll make it happen. So I actually said, I'm going to try to get a derived table to last longer. I'm a clever little fella. And so I said, I'll do a begin transaction. I'll run my query with a with statement and I'll create that derive table. And since I'm in the same transaction, I'll be able to select from it later. And it said, error. I don't even know what you're talking about. That table doesn't exist. So trust me when I tell you, a derived table lasts one query and it's gone. Depending on the release, you can join a certain amount of tables. I think it's over 100. You're probably not going to be doing that. But I want you to know just simply that you can have many derived tables in a query. So here we're going to have the employee table, which we're going to join to two derived tables. One I call T and one I call S. Right away, you can see with T, and I build that derived table it's now materialized. Then I start my select and select all the columns from the employee table as E, inner join T, and I define how I'm going to inner join them. Then I say inner join timeout again, and I run my select query where I build another derived table called S. You're going to have, in many cases, a lot of derived tables and they're their own separate entity and you just merely join those like you would permanent tables and that's what I want you to understand. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.